So I'm using the Fat Forces of Motion app here and I want to look at uh, frictional forces so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this this object around here and increase the force that's being applied to this crate. You can see there's some information down here about the crate. Um, it tells me that the crate has a mass of 100 kilograms and then there's these coefficients of friction. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.3. Uh, it's on a scale from 0 to 1. Um, so not a huge amount of uh, friction between the um, crate and the ground for kinetic friction, but the static friction coefficient is higher, which tells me that the, the maximum amount of force that the static friction can apply is, is more than the, the frictional force uh, once the object is moving. We talked about that quite a bit today. So let's see what happens when I start to apply a force. So I'm going to now apply, start pushing on this block, and of course it doesn't move. You can see in the little window here that I'm applying more and more force. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show by clicking over here the force vectors. So there I've got the balanced normal force and gravitational force. And now if I push, you can see the arrows, the applied force arrow growing. And as the applied force arrow grows, so does the frictional force. So our static friction force varies from zero, if I'm not really pushing on the crate, up to some maximum value. So there's only so much applied force I can apply um, to be balanced by the static frictional force until the block starts to move. Now what I want you to do is watch carefully as the block just begins to move. So applying more and more force. Okay, the block starts to move and what you notice is that the frictional force decreases as soon as the block starts to move and it decreases to a constant value that's lower than the maximum amount of static frictional force. So I'm going to reset this now. Um, and I'm going to do that again. I'll just move the block along a little bit. So to somewhere near the center. And as I start pushing, it's going to actually record it and we play, can play back in slow motion. So I start pushing, the force increases increases increase the applied force so does the static friction force eventually the block starts to move and the object accelerates so let's now play that back and so as we see that applied force increasing and we'll just slow it down here you can see the applied force is increasing and it's balanced by the static friction force as soon as the object starts accelerating you see this fr frictional force decreases to a much lower value. Let's start it again. Just bring that back to the beginning. So notice the frictional force here. It's increasing, balanced by the applied force. So as the applied force is more, so is the static friction force. And then as soon as it starts to move, this force vector here is going to decrease in size. There it goes. And then it stays at the same value, but um, as the object is moving, but it's less than the maximum amount of the static friction force. I can play around with this app um, by choosing different objects. For example, I could choose a filing cabinet. And let's move the filing cabinet to the middle. Now we see the filing cabinet has a slightly smaller mass, I think, than the crate. Yeah, it's half the mass. And a smaller coefficient of kinetic friction, but still quite a big static friction. So here we should really see the force get smaller once the object starts to move. So let's have a look at that. So the two forces are both increasing and see then how how much the um, kinetic friction force is. Once the uh, object starts to move, it really drops down lower, a lot lower because the, um, because the coefficient of kinetic friction is so much smaller. Let's try again. So I start pushing, both forces increase. The static friction force is quite large and then it shifts down to a much smaller value once the object starts to move. So you can play around with um, with this app and uh, experience or sort of observe those, those um, features. So how does changing the coefficient of friction affect the forces and motion of the object? And then this idea about static friction increasing from zero to some maximum value, then switching to kinetic friction, which is a smaller value than the maximum amount of static friction.